Sorry. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Maya's webinar for levels four to five. Our focus activity today, a dinner party. My name is Terry. I'm from the United States, from Seattle, all the way in the Northwest. If you think Seattle seems familiar, it's might, it might be because of Grey's Anatomy or grunge music, Nirvana, Kurt Cobain. Anyway, um, my I am co-teaching today with, please take it away. The amazing Seamus. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. I also teach at Florence Baraka. I am Terry's work colleague, and I am from Ireland, the lovely region of Donegal in the northwest of Ireland. Nice to meet you all. Shall we begin? All right, let's begin. So as you join us, please um, write your name and where you're from in the comments. And as we go along, we really welcome your comments, your questions. If anything is not clear, shoot us a message, send us a chat message, and we will make sure that it's clear for you. Uh, we, will right. we will try. We will try. <laughs> and and. We are human and we make mistakes too. So you can tell yep. us if we make a mistake. Sure. Right. <laughs> so. Glad for all criticism. All right, Seamus, could you read for us? Okay, so we have four to five dinner party. In this focus activity, planning a dinner party. Future with present continuous and imperative form. Wait, future with present continuous. Why yeah. would we talk about, why don't we just use a future tense? Well, we can use future continuous to talk about now or for fixed plans in the future. All we need to add in is like a date, a time and be more specific. Mm. So for example, uh, at the moment, myself and Terry, are doing a webinar. So we say do webinar. That is to talk about now. But tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., myself and Terry are doing a webinar. There we have a time and it's in the future. So it's a, it's, it's a scheduled fixed plan. Yes. In the future, okay. So I think this is really important to tell the Italian learners uh, because in Italian, when we talk about a tense, for example, passato prossimo, passato remoto, these tell us specifically, if you read the name of the tense, it tells you when, passato prossimo, recent past. Passato remoto, remote, past. But the verb tense name in English does not ever tell you when. It tells you the structure. Okay. So this present continuous can be used for an action at this moment in the present, which seems like it should be present simple, but it's not. It can also be used for the future. All right, so we'll get more into that, I think maybe as we go along. If it's not clear, please send us a message and let us know. Perfect. All right. So I love Julia Child. She is one of my absolute favorite people that has ever lived, a genius. She said, a party without cake is just a meeting. So what does that mean, Seamus? What, when you hear that, that a party without cake is just a meeting, what does that make you think? Hmm. It means that you can't have a good time without cake. Maybe cake is right. very important for parties to make something more, I don't know, Oh. Festive. Festive, yeah. Has yeah. like a nice feeling. The the cake just kind of the cake is usually at the end of 
the dinner or at the end of the party. And it's right. sort of it's people end of the, kind of before the dancing at the wedding. Exactly. And the ceremony. So if you think about it, as people eat, they start to talk in little groups or at a gathering, people start to kind of go off to different parts of the room and talk. The cake brings everyone back together. Very nice. So, like it. so I love Julia Child. All right. Hello from Nicoletta from Verrucchio near Rimini. Welcome. All right. Uh, Hi, Nicoletta. Uh, so, as we go along, please join us, send us your answers, your comments, and as always, any questions that you have. So, Seamus, do you like having parties? Huh. Um, <laughs> for the purposes of this video, I will say yes. <laughs> not usually. I'm not a very interactive person. I like to stay at home and relax. But for this one, I'll say yes. I love having parties. All right. I don't have to pretend. Ah, pretend is a false friend in Italian. Okay. So, what is pretend, the... Pretend is to fare finto. Pretend is to do something that is not real. Pretendere is like to demand. So, pretendere, to demand, but pretend fare finto. Okay, so I do like having parties. My parties are kind of small, maybe 12 to 15 people, but I love to cook and I love to see people enjoy themselves. So tell me the truth. How often do you have parties? Oh, in the truth, uh, I have parties twice a year. Okay. So there are different kinds of parties. I usually have small dinner parties with maybe six to eight people, or I have um, aperitivo, aperitif parties that have maybe 12 to 15 people. What kind of parties do you have? Okay. Well, my favorite kind of parties would be barbecue. You know, like have a gathering for a barbecue party. I love barbecued food. Uh, me too. In America, we barbecue all the time. It's true. But it's very but here, difficult to have barbecues in Italy because I can't simply go to the park and have a barbecue. I think it is uh, against the law. I think it might be. I had a huge huge barbecue grill in America in my, because I my backyard backyard in English garden garden in Italian but I it was huge and so I had big outdoor barbecues I didn't have to go to the park so do you think it's fun to plan a party um well usually I don't plan the parties. I leave that to my sister. My sister is very good at planning parties and cooking. So okay. it's a good excuse for me to go to her house and eat burgers or have a Irish breakfast party. We no. have bacon, sausages, beans, uh, pudding, white pudding, black pudding, toast. Wait, what breakfast. is pudding? Uh, because pudding. From a, from a pig is like, a, a, how would I say? Black pudding is not so nice. It's like the blood of a pig. Yeah, it's not for everyone. So this is really interesting. Is it spelled P-U-D-D-I-N-G? Ah, yeah. Yes. Because it can also be pudding. Yeah, it's spelled the same as the cake. It's true. So in English, pudding is a sweet dessert made from milk and sugar and vanilla and 
or maybe chocolate. No, it's whereas not... uh, pudding for the Irish breakfast would be like uh, the meat of a pig, uh, grounded up and put together. It's not quite nice to describe, but it tastes good. It's not at the same at all. All no. right. Good to know. So I will not be ordering pudding when I visit Ireland. Oh, but it's, you need to. The Irish breakfast is the best in the world. We have so, a really big breakfast in Ireland and then a quite small lunch compared to Italy where you have a small breakfast and then a big lunch and then a relatively small dinner compared to Ireland. We have a bigger dinner, but earlier in the day. So dinner in Ireland would probably be 5.30 or 6 o'clock, whereas in Italy can be anything from 7.30 to 9 in the or evening. 10. Or 10, yes. Okay. <laughs> so I've heard of a full English breakfast. How is an Irish breakfast different? It is exactly the same. The English just stole it from the Irish. <laughs> 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 or or might, might they say the same for you? Oh, of course they will. All right. But I don't recall when I was, I've been to London three times. Okay. And I don't recall any pudding. I had no. sausage and bacon and beans and tomato and toast and eggs. But you and didn't have the pudding. Then you missed out, I think. <laughs> okay. All right. So the last question, what do you need when planning a party? Mm, this would be a good, uh, good question for our viewers. If you can think of anything extra that you need for parties, because I won't list everything, but I will try my best. All right. Okay. So for a general party, I think you need decorations. Okay. okay, which can Great. be lots of different things. Uh, maybe a banner with a person's name, depending on what the situation is. So if it's a wedding, if it's a going away party, to say, uh, we will see you again soon. Or, or a birthday party. It's a general birthday party that says, happy okay. birthday. Okay, so decorations. Uh, other thing for decorations, like maybe balloons. Mm. Confetti. Yeah. Confetti. Oh. Confetti, but, would you throw in the air? Oh, but Can what be... a mess to clean up. Yes, it makes lots of, uh, leaves lots of cleaning for the evening. My sister's very good at cleaning, though, organizing and, and cleaning after the parties. So you just go and have fun? I go and I eat the food with my nieces and nephews. So we're, we're the lazy ones. Okay. So when I plan a party, I also have to plan and do the shopping for the menu. Oh, that's true. For the food. Um, also, I have to count the number of guests to decide if I have to buy maybe paper plates or plastic um, flatware, forks and knives or glasses. So yeah. there's a lot that goes into planning a party. Yeah, and you also need to invite those guests. <sighs> so you maybe need to write letters or send them a text message, depending on, yeah, depending on the type of party, if it's formal or informal. All right. Well, so let's move on to some dinner party vocabulary. We've given some of it, for example, food and drinks. You said earlier decorations, uh, invitations, but also location and music. So all of you out there watching, go ahead and tell us which word belongs to which picture. So for example, C, I will tell you C, obviously food. Okay, so tell us which word goes with which picture. Very good. All right. So while we're waiting for some answers, shall we? I think we can talk about favorites. Ooh, favorites. Uh, so, yeah, I'll go first. 
So, okay. uh, Terry, what is your favorite? Let's go a little more specific. What is your favorite Italian food? <sighs> I wish I could say pizza. Rabina, exactly. B is drinks. Very good. Um, my favorite Italian food is either pasta carbonara or pasta alla puttanesca. Okay, very good. So, I in America, we have this idea that carbs, carbo carbohydrati, carbs are bad. And here in Italy, I have really embraced the idea yeah. of eating pasta. So yeah. carbs are essential in the Italian diet. They're like the, the 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 number one they focus on. You have your pizza, your pasta. My favorite uh -huh. Italian food: scacciata, <sighs> risotto. Oh, Very nice. now. I love risotto al zafferano with saffron. What is your favorite risotto? I don't have a preference. I like it all. I have not. I haven't come across any I don't like. I'm not very good with the names, though. That's, uh, okay. that's, so I wouldn't even be able to tell you what is my number one, my favorite, because I don't know. I just know risotto, the the one I like. <laughs> Okay, so we've got some great answers. Nicoletta gave us answer A, location. Um, then Rabina gave us B, drinks. Good. And also C, food. Excellent. Thank you, Nicoletta, Rabina. Um, D, music. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. E, someone had given us, ah, Rabina again, E, decorations. And F, Nicoletta, invitations. Excellent. Way to go, everybody. Thank you. Very good yeah. teamwork. Excellent. Now, planning a party. All right. So how do you decide what type? or kind of party you want to have? Well, there's a lot of different kinds of parties, right, Seamus? Exactly, so lots of things uh, are factors here. So it mm -hmm. really depends on the type of party. So let's go for a birthday party, because it's very general. We have at least one of those a year for everyone. <laughs> there's a birthday somewhere every day. Exactly. All right. Um, so how can I decide? So imagine I'm having a birthday party. What things do I have to think about to decide what type of party? I think one of the most important things I have to think about is my budget. How much money do I have to spend? Okay, very good. I was thinking something completely different. What I were you like thinking? First, maybe we would decide uh, what age you will be. For example, if you're uh, 27, it's not like a really important milestone age. But if you're 30, it's for some reason more important. So you would have more emphasis on that party. You would, it would be, you would invite more people. So milestone parties. Mm -hmm. um, last the budget, year, budget is you, definitely more important. So budget, the amount of money you have available. A year and a half ago in October, it was my boyfriend's 40th party. Okay. The big four zero. And mm -hmm. so I invited 20 eight of his friends there was a football match that night his favorite team on his birthday so i arranged a surprise party at a pub that was big enough with decent food and we had um his surprise birthday party there at the pub so that everyone okay. could watch the game okay good idea the next year, 
we had a very small, intimate party with just a few friends at a pizzeria. So you're right, the milestone. Milestone, a big deal. Okay, good. All right. What um, about uh, if we were not having a birthday party, but we were having my favorite uh, barbecue? Mm. In Ireland, it's very, very important that you think about the weather. So that could be a big factor because it is always raining and windy in Ireland. Uh, so it depends on the weather. Yeah. Okay. I think it also depends on um, the number of guests you can invite depends on the location. Very good. Yeah. The location. Yeah. If it's an outside, you could obviously have a barbecue inside as well. If you have the correct setup, the correct location. Ah, so we have, we covered some of these. So we had budget for money, weather, the season. If it's a barbecue party, you don't want to have a barbecue in the middle of winter. It would probably <laughs> be a bad idea. Probably. Although I would still go. <laughs> so if any of our students are having a barbecue even today uh, well in this period of time it's probably not safe to have a barbecue Seamus, but in the middle of the winter i will be there okay because seamus sorry but right now we aren't allowed to be outside so barbecue that's, that's true that's true it's a bad idea but don't worry everybody we know that in a very short time, everything will be better and you can invite us all to your barbecues. Yes, I think even my S should organize a barbecue as a celebration once this is all finished. I think you're right. Because so, we're not, we, we can't have our uh, St. Patrick's Day festival next week. So I think at least we should have a barbecue. I think you are absolutely right. It's going to be terrible to celebrate St. Patrick's Day in the house without my friends. So, and I'm not even Irish. <laughs> I'm a little Irish. Okay. On, my, on my mom's mom's side, I'm a little Irish, so. Huh. Okay. Well, every so, American is a little Irish, I think, because we have so many people who came from Ireland to America even though we're such a small country. So I want to go back to something you said earlier, and that was the word milestone. So when you're planning a party and the type of party depends on the age of the person being celebrated, if it's mm -hmm. an important event, a wedding, a birth, 40 years old, 30 years old. These are important dates or events. So we call that a milestone. Mm -hmm. Like married for five years, married for 10 years, 50 <laughs> years marriage. Yeah, they all have different names as well. I'm not so sure on them. Like a, a golden anniversary, silver 50. anniversary. 50 years golden, 25 okay. years silver. Ah, very good. So Nicoletta says, I spend for my birthday party 200 euro only for drinks and food. Location in my home with my family and my friends. Okay. So 200 euro for a birthday party. Uh, if it's all of your family and friends, and it covers all the food and drinks. I think that's a good deal, Nicoletta. I think that's really good. Yeah, that can be really good. It really depends on how many people you invite, but I think that's that's very good. Okay. So let's go on so that we can begin practicing some of our grammar points. Yes. All right. Will you take this slide for us, Seamus? Perfect. So tonight I am... Mm, so here is a perfect chance for all of you watching. Can you 
uh, share your fixed plans with us tonight. Okay, I know you might not have fixed plans, but even you can invent, create. Seamus, okay? I have a fixed plan for tonight, <laughs> for tomorrow, tomorrow right? <laughs> for this weekend. I it's am very difficult for having to have fixed plans at the moment. Everyone is. is I am home. staying home <laughs> until April third. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> It's a good fixed plan. Uh, it's a mandatory fixed plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely fixed then. It's definitely fixed. Excuse me. Okay, you're okay. Uh, so ask your partner what they are doing tonight, this weekend, or tomorrow. All right, so, so Shane, let's, let's, let's imagine that we are not on quarantine. Okay. And tell me, so this is... If the government is watching, this is pretend, this is not real. Yeah, we are not going to be uh, exiting our homes. All right. Just a normal just Friday it. night. All right. On a normal Friday night, imagine that today is a normal Friday. What, okay. are, you, what are you doing tonight? Okay. So tonight, I am eating pizza at Da Tito, a small restaurant in Florence. Excellent. And what are you doing tomorrow? Okay. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning, I am going swimming with my uh, girlfriend. And then in the afternoon, we are going to the park to have a picnic and to relax. Wonderful. And where... Where are you going for vacation this year? Okay. Uh, the same as every year. I am going back to see my family in Ireland. Okay. So that is a long way in the future, yes? That's maybe oh, August? Okay. Good, yeah. So if I just say I am going back to visit my family in Ireland without the time or the date in the future, it is actually talking about now. Good. So I should say, I am going back to visit my. Uh, I'm going back to visit my family in Ireland in August. Okay. So even though we are talking about an event that is April, May, June, July, August, five months in the future, we use the present continuous because the plan is. Fixed. The plan is set. The Tito is in Florence is closed now. Ah, we yes. know. Yes, Nicoletta, <laughs> the restaurants are closed. We are imagining uh, um, what we would like to be doing to make examples. We are not leaving our houses tonight. Yeah. Otherwise, we would all have the same fixed plan, and it, this lesson would be a little boring. A lot boring, just like life right now, just a little boring, yes? <laughs> all right. Um, so, you are going swimming tomorrow morning, and yeah. then in the afternoon, you are going to the park for a picnic. Perfect. I'm going to Cascine Park for a picnic. Okay. <laughs> so events in the future, in the near future, or the far future, if they are fixed, mm -hmm. if they are set and they are not likely to change, we use the present continuous. Correct? Yes. All right. I'm going to visit my family, Seamus. Uh, yeah, I put I put in. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> I was I was reading going. I was I was too busy listening to you. I made a little mistake. <laughs> I do it all the time. All right, so I'm going to visit my easier. family in Ireland in August. All right, excellent. Um, I hope that. In June, I believe 
but I have not bought the tickets yet. So can I say, my sons are coming to visit in June. I don't have tickets yet. And I don't okay. have, they have not agreed. Can I say that? Okay, so if you have not agreed the, uh, the plan, or if it's not fixed or set, you would use going to rather than uh, present continuous. Okay. So your sons are going to visit you uh, in because July or June? Because it's what I intend, but because it's not fixed, I can't use present continuous. Perfect. Okay. All right. Excellent. So, so we have, I I'll use mine as an example since I put it down. So here you say, I am going to visit my family in Ireland in August is an intention. I don't have it, uh, the flights booked yet. Okay. But if I did book my flights, my sentence would look more like this. So I am, oh, I did another mistake. Oh, so I, I am <laughs> visiting my family in Ireland in August without the second am. Um. So I swear to you all out there, we are English teachers, but it is really difficult to type and talk or listen at the same time. <laughs> and so I always make mistakes when I write because I'm trying to read everything and talk to uh, my co-teacher. So the difference with the going to, the future intention, is that we use going to followed by another verb. Whereas in the present continuous, it's the I am with that verb in the ing form, the present continuous for fixed plans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Nicolette. Yes, excellent. <laughs> <Name. laughs> all right. I am embarrassed. <laughs> uh, it happens to me all the time. So, all right, what I would like from all of you out there is please use some of these suggestions, some of these ideas, and make some sentences yourself while Seamus and I also make some sentences. Perfect. So, Seamus, can you ask me a present continuous question? Okay. So, um, let's go for a difficult one. Terry. What are you doing right now? At the moment, I am teaching English with my colleague, Seamus. Very good. Uh, now, Terry, there, there, hmm? uh, I'll let you finish. No, I was just going to point out that the adverb of frequency changes from present simple to present continuous. If we want to say always, sometimes, usually, often, never, these are adverbs of frequency for present simple, but adverbs of frequency for present continuous include at the moment, today, this evening, even tomorrow, right? Mm, tomorrow. Um, I am staying home tomorrow. Perfect, yeah, because it's like a fixed plan for tomorrow. Exactly. So, Seamus, what yes. are you doing tonight? Okay, so tonight... I am sitting on my sofa and watching Netflix <laughs> because I can't do anything else. Uh, I understand. I understand. <laughs> so, uh, Terry, uh, what are you having for dinner tonight? Hmm. Well, it's Friday. 
And it's Friday during the season of Lent. That's the Quaresima for all of you Catholic Italians out there. So it's the season of Lent. So I am not eating fish. Oh, sorry. I am not eating meat at dinner tonight. I okay. am eating fish. Very nice. I don't think Nicoletta is very happy. <laughs> Why not? What did I say, Nicoletta? Corretta, what did I say? What Maybe I she say? wants to eat the same and she you didn't yeah. invite her. Ah. Well, wait, Nicoletta, where are you from? Where did Nicoletta say she was from? She must be from Florence because no. she knew that Tito was closed. No, Nicoletta is from Verrucchio near Rimini. Ah, okay. And it was Rabina, I think, that was... Um, no, Nicoletta knew about the Tito. Okay. Ah, because all... No, because, because all everything is closed. Okay. So, Nicoletta, why the frowny face? What did I say? <laughs> all right. So, Seamus... Um, what aren't you doing tomorrow? Okay, so tomorrow I am not going into the school. Ah, okay. Or I can say tomorrow I am not going swimming with my girlfriend or <laughs> going to the park for a picnic. <laughs> Excellent. Negative present continuous. <laughs> All right. Because it isn't possible to go out in the evening now. Ah, this for the frowny face. Yes, uh, I understand. Um, Ter uh, Terry, could you give some examples for uh, both of us for negative that we're not doing tomorrow? Uh, Just to show the, the contraction of the negative. We aren't going to the school. We aren't going out of our houses. And we aren't going to eat at Datito. Perfect. Good contraction. All right. Thank you. So, Seamus, I'll, I'll leave this one with you too. Okay. So, come on over. That's another way to say, you can come to my house. Come on over. Tell your friends what to bring to the party. Imperative examples. Please bring an appetizer. Let's buy a chocolate cake for dessert. Don't forget the wine. It's very important. <laughs> Especially now. <laughs> All right, so other examples. What we would like you to do, all of you out there that can comment, is use the imperative and make other examples for what to bring, how to prepare. So, example, what can I bring to your party? All right? Yeah, yeah so I want you all to think that you are hosting the party and you're giving commands to your sons, your daughters, your boyfriends, girlfriends, Best and you're telling friend. them to, yeah, to, to do these things uh, to help you organize the party. All right, so Seamus, could you send out, no, not could you, because if I say could you, I'm introducing a question. Mm -hmm. now, an imperative can include polite language, such as please, okay? Imperative is the command form. It is the command form, but it's always nice to use the polite command form. So, Seamus... Please send the invitations to the guests. Okay. I will do that now. All right. So what 
<laughs> what other imperatives can you think of? So, um, Seamus, what other imperatives? Mm, let me see. I don't want to answer any of the questions below or the imperatives below. Exactly. Hmm. Okay. So we'll go for one of the ones above. Terry, uh, I know you're coming to my party tomorrow, but I want to remind you, don't forget to wear white. White, but then yeah. when they spill, Robichari, spill red wine. Yes, but it's a, it's a, a ghost party. Ah. Everybody is dressed with or uh, in white. All right. Okay. Seamus, um, I would appreciate if you would bring some beer. Okay. Ah, bring some beer, not bring a beer. Well, bring a beer. Only for one you, for one person, maybe you, maybe me. Yeah. Oh, if I bring one beer, it is for me. <laughs> okay. Bring some beer, an unspecified amount, but okay. more than one. Okay. All right. So I see that we're getting down to our last um, 10 minutes. So Seamus, let's give our students some examples using these um, okay beginning so Seamus so I will continue for bring a some common ones here we, we could say is uh, uh, you are invited to the party please bring a friend oh okay I would say I will cook everything but bring a bottle of wine okay good yeah I will give you the food you bring the drink Exactly. Okay. So get some. This is probably before the party starts. So you might say to your son or daughter, uh, go to the shop and get some milk. For a party. Yeah, I we need say... milk. We need milk to bake a cake. Uh... So milk is important. Get some milk. Or just get a cake. All right. Or Seamus, get some ice for the drinks. Oh, very good idea. Yeah, we need cold drinks, especially right. in summer in Florence. Oh, it's very hot. All right. Um, Seamus, will you buy? No. Seamus, please buy a banner that says happy birthday. Okay, very good. Or I'll give an example with some. Uh, Terry, please buy some balloons today. Okay. I, I need them it. for tonight. <laughs> can, we, can we have helium? Can we have helium so we sound like the little munchkins? <laughs> sure. All right. Okay. Um, Seamus, prepare the cocktails. Oh, what does it mean, prepare? Prepare. It's like to make. If I am making a cake, I first prepare all the ingredients. I put them together. Okay, very good. Uh, good explanation. Okay, I will prepare the cocktails if you prepare the cake. I will happily, gladly prepare the cake. I love to okay. cook. All right. Guinness! Oh. So. Perfect. <laughs> Seamus? Bring, bring a Guinness. Some, bring, bring a box of Guinness. There we are. Bring some Guinness. <laughs> All right. So here we could say, uh, get some chicken so that we can prepare sandwiches. Excellent. Or you could say, prepare the sandwiches for the party. Perfect. Um, Seamus, mm -hmm. please prepare the text for the invitations and then we can send it to our list. Very good. Ooh. 
It's a little slow. Uh, Terry, uh, bring some uh, muffins, cupcakes. How do we call Tart. these? Like they're like the Tart. 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 oh little, tarts, little pies, tarts. Uh, pies would be the word I would use. More popular in Ireland, tarts. Uh, I like. That. But pies, little pies, tarts. Mince pies All are right. beautiful. I love pie. Oh, Seamus, would you prepare a list of music for the for the party? Okay, I will prepare a list, but can you buy the DVD? Okay, I will buy the DVD. Perfect, because I have no money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Seamus, remember to get some fruit before the party. Okay, I will get the fruit. Terry, uh, if I get the fruit, for example, the grapes, can you prepare the wine? Oh, I will definitely prepare the wine. Oh, wow. You know how to make the wine. Oh, no, I meant, I meant I will open the bottles. I will let and, the wine air out. Uh, and then you will pour it into the glass. And then I will pour it into the, and then I will pour it into my mouth. <laughs> Very good. All right. So the last thing we're going to do, we're going to bring all of these things together now. And Seamus and I are going to plan a dinner party. So Seamus, choose some famous guests to invite to our dinner party. Mm, okay. Famous guests. Well, you're American. So it wouldn't be a good dinner party if we didn't invite Donald Trump to see what he's really like in person. We need to see what he's like in person. So we're going to invite uh, Mr. Donald Trump, the president of America. Oh, heart failure. Can you invite one more guest? Who do you think would be a good? Um, yes, if we're inviting Donald Trump, I think it's important to invite Vladimir Putin. Oh, that would, yeah, that would be a very interesting party. Absolutely. All right. So, Seamus, when can we have this party? Okay. Well, uh, I am free for the next month. So <laughs> we can have it any time now. So let's uh, schedule the party for the 20th of this month, 20th of March. Okay, so next Friday. Yes. Um, please send out the invitations. Okay, I will send out the invitations. Okay. Terry, uh, before I send out the invitations, well, <laughs> where, where are we having the party? I would prefer to have Obama, absolutely. Um, <laughs> The Das from Milano says, can we have Trump and Obama just for a giggle? Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. I, I, I think we can have three guests. Yeah. Trump, Putin, and Obama. Yeah. Trump and Putin will be in the corner alone. All right. <laughs> um, so, well, if we keep the party small. Okay. Um, we could have it here at my home. We could oh, have up to 12 people. Okay, very good. And what time can we start the party so that I can put it into the invitation? Well, I think that because of the time difference for everybody, I think the best time might be mid to late afternoon so that it's not too early for the Americans and not too late for the Russians. Okay, and for us. And for us. So maybe if we start around 5 p.m.? Okay, perfect. And I think the theme for our party should be uh, formal, you know, like suits and ties. You Absolutely. can wear a lovely dress. Absolutely. Okay, so um, formal attire, 
5 p.m. Friday on Friday, March the 20th. Very good. Um, the only two things we have left are the food, drinks, and entertainment. Well, I think there will be entertainment enough if there is Obama, Trump, and Putin in the room. That is true. But just in case, I will schedule a live band. X. Oh, a live band. It must be very small. So maybe um, a trio. Okay. So a small live band. Okay. Um, food and drinks. Seamus, if you will please organize the, the drinks, I will be happy to plan the menu. Okay. And I will try and not get any oranges because I know that Donald Trump has a, a difficulty between pronouncing oranges and origins. So we don't uh, want to have that confusion. And also because if you get too many oranges, he will blend in and we won't be able to find him. That is very true. <laughs> okay. So, all right. We have gone a minute over our time um, having a little fun there. So I hope that you enjoyed the lesson. I hope that the difference between the present continuous the use of present continuous for present and for future is clear. And uh, this imperative, remember, always try to be polite, even when using this imperative form. So with that, I'm Terry. Thank you for joining. I'll let Seamus close us out. Hi, I'm Seamus. Nice to meet you all. Please keep participating as much as possible. And we will see you again soon. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.